<clears throat> Shalom, Brother Kabad, back in GMS lesson, GMST pushing. Before I go any further, I give all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father's only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahushai, Bahashem, Rakapadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders, the great millstone, teach us this truth according to the Bible we love. I know so one honor, sincere acting for the four points of the earth, Christian is truth, through diligence, and sincerity, and in charity. And now shall one or agency of followers, believers of Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, not just hearers of the word, but doers as well. You men, women, and children, hope for your life, Shalom. <clears throat> and this is, um, the title of this lesson is going to be uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 2, or Sirach chapter 2, alright. And um, I was reading this chapter, and it was very uplifting to me, alright. And I, I pray it was uplifting to you as well, alright, those that are. Sincere followers, believers of, of the faith, all right, of these so called Negro Latino Native Americans. So, without further ado, we're gonna jump on right into it. And, uh, Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. This is Sirach chapter 2, verse 1. It says, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Shai, prepare thy soul for temptation, all right. And we know that what the scriptures tell you in John, you cannot, um, and then the Lord does the choosing. You have not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you to go and bring forth fruit. Alright? So when the Lord chooses you to serve him, look, you're going to be uh, uh, tempted, man, to do what? To go off, in a sense. Alright? Temptation is to do something bad. Something not right. Okay? And there are many things in this world, all right, that can, that can uh, um, pull you to doing wrong things. Whether it's taking the, 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 this man's jab, taking the MOTB, committing adultery, all right, sleeping with another man's uh, woman, eating abominable food, so on and so forth, man. All right, it says, verse 2, set thy heart aright, was talking about your mind. And constantly endure because evil and wickedness and darkness is all around us at all times. All right. Trying to pollute us, going back to Micah 2 and 10. Arise ye in the park, for this is not your rest. That place is talking about America, man, aka Babylon. It shall destroy you with the sword of destruction. So, what? We're supposed to set our heart aright and constantly endure. Endure what? The temptation, the temptations, man. All right, and make not haste in the time of trouble. All right, because look, we're in trouble in times. We're in Jacob's trouble, and it's only going to get worse. It says, "Cleave unto him and depart not away." Who did he? Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. How do we cleave unto the Lord through this truth? The Lord told us in Revelation. All right, um, matter of fact, let me get it. Let me get it real fast, so I can. Lord told us to hold that fast what we have. All right, that no man take thy crown. This is our Revelation chapter 3, verse 11. It says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. All right, which is it's talking about this wisdom. All right, this is the only thing we got in, 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 in this earth, man. And we got to pray that we hold on to it. All right. So going back, going back to uh, Sirach 2 and um, uh, uh, 3, it says, Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. That's right, man. Strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee. And these last days, man, that's all we have, man, is to fight for the Lord. We've seen uh, 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 our people, the so-called Negro Latino Native American Hebrew Israelites, all right, um, um, you know, uh, going in different uh, ventures to reach salvation and hope, all right? And they cleave to America when they need to be cleaving to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai through this truth, all right? It says, and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. The scripture also says, strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee, all right? Verse 4 it says, Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient without our change to a lower state. 
And that's what that's that's a tough pill to swallow when you come into this truth, man. That's a tough pill to swallow. Because you're gonna you're gonna be put through that fire, man. And when you go through the fire, uh <laughs> spiritually or uh physically, it doesn't feel good, man. It doesn't feel good at all. You may lose a job, may lose a woman, may lose, you know, a, a child, may lose uh, your home, all right? May catch a flat tire, car break down, whatever is brought upon you, the scriptures tell us to take take it cheerfully, man, and be patient, all right, when, you, when, 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 you, when, you, when you're brought to a lower state. Because you're being tried, as the fifth verse says, says, for gold is tried in the fire. An acceptable men in the furnace of adversity, which goes back to Zechariah 13 and 8, man. All right. Which goes back to Zechariah 13 and 8. I didn't want to make this a long lesson, but um, let me just get that real fast. It's the book of Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. It says, and it shall, and it shall come to pass. That in all the land, say of the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, which represents two thirds of the nation of Israel. Okay, because they were uh, uh, um, constantly sinning, didn't want to repent, wasn't set up to repent. All right, it says, but the third shall be left therein, the one third. All right, that that the uh, um, the prophets, the one forty four, the men, women, and children. All right, the believers. It says, and I will bring the, bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and I will try them as gold is tried. And and I will, so like it says, and it says, they shall call on my name and I will hear them and I will say it is my people and they shall say the Lord is my power, my God. That's right, man. So, you know, you're going to be tried like silver and gold is tried because when that's, those pr precious metals are put to the fire. The um the uh, impurities you know it, you know it, it it purifies the gold it takes off um you know all the dross all right to make that perfect metal that perfect uh, stone all right and we're being made perfect through this word it says um back in Sirach two it says believe in him verse six and um. Says, believe in him and he will help thee order thy way of right and trust in him that's right going back to proverbs the third chapter trust in the lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding all right and it takes faith to believe in yahweh shai and faith is a gift according to ephesians the second chapter around the eighth verse all right so if you got faith pray for more faith all right, pray that you know your trust for your how about your mouth increases, but it's going to look you're going to go through some things. All right, it says, and he will help thee, order thy way of right, and, and trust in him. All right, verse 7 it says, Ye, ye that fear the Lord will wait for his mercy and go not aside, lest ye fall. Ye that fear the Lord, believe him, and your war shall not fail. That's right, it's all about fear and being, being terrified of someone or something can cause pain. And we know through the scriptures, several precepts, first Samuel, the second chapter, all right, drawing 32 and 39 on why you should fear the Lord, because he had the issues of, to him, but alone the issues of life and death, all right, who even called God in Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah, that's the names of the ancient Hebrew, all right, the Lashimon Kodash, all right, we believe that here on faith, a great millstone, all right, which is a gift, <laughs> all right, it reads on verse 9, it says, ye that fear the Lord, hope for good. And for everlasting joy and mercy. Look at the generations of old and see. Did ever any trust in the Lord was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? Yeah, read Bell and the Dragon. One of my favorites, man. All right. In the Apocrypha. In the King James uh, Bible, 1611. Read, read, read the story about Bell and the Dragon, man. All right. And look at other accounts that our forefathers have went through. Meshach, Shemrach, and Abednego, all the, all, all the ancient prophets, they trust in the Lord. They wasn't uh, forsaken or confounded. Verse 11, for the Lord is full of compassion, mercy, long-suffering, and very pitiful, and saveth 
and forgive of sins and save her in the time of affliction. So in these times that are coming, where we're about to be afflicted, all right, Revelation 12 and 12, this devil's getting ready to come down upon the children of Israel. We know that what the Lord is going to save us, man, in the time of affliction. Remember Daniel 12 and 1? And in that time, Michael shall stand up the great prince, which shall stand for the children of thy people. All right? He's going to stand up for the, the, the elect of the nation of Israel. Once again, which consists of the so-called Negro, Latino, and Native Americans. All right? Sirach 2 and 12. It says, Woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands, and the sinner that go two ways. That's right. A double-minded man. All right? Destruction unto him, as the scriptures say. That, that I don't know if you know if this is is gonna really happen. The prophecy is gonna really happen. I I don't I don't know about doing all this work. All right, destruction is that man. Verse thirteen: Woe to him that is faint-hearted, for he believeth not. Therefore shall he not be defended. That's right. Jeremiah thirty and seven: He's not gonna be defended in Jacob's trouble. All right. Verse fourteen: Woe unto you that have lost patience. And what will you do when the Lord shall visit you? Yeah, those that, that, that lost the faith, went back into the world, became rappers, became uh, uh, missile food, pretty much. Jacob's trouble food, all right? Scripture says, whoa, destruction, destruction, destruction. You lost patience in the Lord, man. You didn't want to suffer. So the scripture says, woe to you. What you going to do when the Lord pop up on the scene, man? You're going to do nothing but give up the spirit. Verse 15. It says, They that fear the Lord will not disobey his words. That's right. The Lord told you to go out there and teach, prophesy. You go out there and do it. Remember, no, uh, he that put up his hand to the plow looking back is not fit for the kingdom of heaven. That's for those guys that lost patience, man. All right? They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. And they that love him will keep his ways, which is the commandments. That was given to the children of Israel. Leviticus 26 and 46. Psalms 147, 19 and 20. Verse 16 says, They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well pleasing unto him. All right, what's pleasing to the Lord? You dwelling with wisdom. Wisdom of Solomon, the seventh chapter, man. I think around the 28th verse. It says, And they that love him, 1 John 5 and 3. We're just keeping the commandments shall be filled with the law. All right. You got to have wisdom to please the Lord, man. And he gave it to us then through this book. And the Lord has set up teachers. Jeremiah 3 and 15, which shall feed you with wisdom and knowledge and understanding. So there's no excuse, man. For there's no excuse for Jake. It says they that and when we say Jake, we say it's short for Jacob, which for uh, we're talking about the 12 tribes of Israel Alright, because Jacob Whose name was changed to Israel Alright, is the forefather Alright, of Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Simeon Gad, Reuben All 12 brothers, man All the way down to Issachar Alright Verse 17, Sirach 2 and 17 They that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts, their minds And humble their souls in his sight Those that, that fear the Lord That shows you how many people are fearing the Lord Not many all right. They prepare their minds in these last days. They will prepare their minds for what? For what is written, the prophecies, man. All right. They're going to be Luke 21 and 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that we are able to be found worthy to escape those things that are coming. Roughly paraphrasing. Verse 18, it says, saying, we will fall into the hands of the Lord and not to the hands of men. For as his majesty is, so is his mercy. And that's what we, that's what we pray, man. We pray we fall into the hands of the Lord, like King David, right? We pray we fall into the hands of the one that shows mercy. That's very pitiful, and, and we just read it in a few verses up, man. Very compassionate. All right. That's who the hands, the hopeful elect, we want to fall into, man. Because you know what Esau, there is no mercy. There is no mercy. All right. So this is a quick lesson through the spirit, you know, Sirach chapter two. Lord willing, that's what's edifying until next time I say, Shalom.